The overall goal of this procedure is to image the brain's dopaminergic response to smoking cigarettes. This is accomplished by first imaging a smoker smoking in the PET scanner after the dopamine antagonist tracer 11C raclopride has been injected. The second step is to reconstruct the list mode data to images, taking motion into account, and then smooth the PET images with a hyperfilter. Next, the time activity curves are modeled at the voxel level with LPNT PET, and the resulting dopamine curves are retained only for those voxels that are well fit by the model. The final step is to color code the fractional dopamine level at each voxel over time in significant voxels and capture the color coded values as a series of dynamic images. Ultimately, it is hoped the LPNT PET generated dopamine movies of cigarette smoking will be used to reveal a unique spatiotemporal pattern of addiction. The main advantage of our kinetic model over conventional ones like the two tissue compartment model, SRTM, or the Logan plot is that our model contains a time varying parameter. But, like SRTM and the Logan plot, it is linear in parameters. The presence of a time varying parameter in the LPNT PET model means that we can describe the uptake or displacement of the PET tracer even when the endogenous neurotransmitter is not at steady state. A clinical aspect of our techniques that cannot be overlooked is the statistical step. For us, the app test which we use to identify those voxel locations that require a time-bearing model for adequate descriptions. Although the method is presently applied to addiction and the dopamine system, it could also be applied to other conditions and neurotransmitter systems, such as depression and serotonin. For example, provided that we have...